Hey guys. So in this video, we're going to be sharing with you our favorite formation in FIFA 23 right now. And why this formation is so good is because there's so many different ways and different styles that work for this formation. But it is just such a good formation. It's so good offensively. It's so good defensively. And it's a formation that we have used for a hell of a long time. So it's something we're super comfortable with as well. And that is something that's really important when it comes to choosing what formation is the best. A lot of it comes from familiarity. If you be, if you play with the same formation a lot, you become very, very comfortable with it. You know how it works. You know the ins and outs. And that's really what determines whether a formation is great or not great in the long term. So in order for us to keep producing videos like this, then make sure that you hit that like button and make sure you do subscribe and also turn on that notifications bell so that you know exactly when we release new content. So some of you may have guessed it, but that formation is the 4 triple 2 Now that for us is the best formation in the game. Now some people will definitely agree with this formation. It's certainly a formation that is very, very popular. And for some other people, they might disagree. They might have their own formations that they think are the best. But for us, the 4 triple 2 is still the king of the formations. And the reason why this formation is so good for us, of course, like we said before, we've used this formation a lot. You know, it's one of those formations where we make sure we constantly have it in our game plan and we just tweak the tactics, we tweak the instructions, we just tweak things every now and then as, you know, players change and, and, and players come in and out of our team as the game gets patched and just sort of changes slightly and things get tweaked. Certain things become less powerful and certain things become more powerful. So it's always a bit important to update your tactics, but making sure that you have a good style of play that suits your formation is also very critical. Now, when it comes to those tactics, like we said, we do like to tweak things. And, and something that we like to play on a little bit more now is to play on pressure on heavy touch. So that just simply means that we're going to press in certain scenarios. You know, in some scenarios, uh, we found that when we was on balance, we was a bit made it a little bit too easy for our opponent to play out. And we like to press in certain situations because it is relevant. You do want to try and win the ball back you know, in certain situations that don't expose you too much. We don't like playing on a heavy press or anything like that, just simply because it opens you up far too regularly when it's just not necessary. But in certain moments, it really is important to press, try and win that ball back quickly. The rest of it kind of stays very similar in those areas. You know, we still play on 45 whip. We still play on 60 depth, of course. You're going to play on a press. You do need to play on a slightly higher depth because if you're on like 40 depth and playing a press, your players have got to press from really deep. So therefore, it's not as effective. So if you're playing on a press, we recommend you're going to play with any kind of press. You've got to play on at least 55. You know, you don't want to go above sort of 65, though, because then it makes it like you just open yourself up too much, just too unnecessarily. In terms of the offense, the build up play, we still play on balanced and direct passing. We still feel like that is the strongest way to play with this formation. Of course, the direct passing paired with the pressure on occasion, it does open you up a little bit. So you do have to just be mindful of that. There are going to be some times in a game where you are going to be opened up a little bit more than you would like. However, we feel like it's worth the risk because the amount of chances that this sort of combination creates, you should be two, three goals up out of sight. And if you get 3-0 up in a game, we recommend then just switching into a more defensive formation. That's what game plans are for. You switch into something like maybe a 4-2-3-1, a 4-4-1-1, where you're not playing on a press, you're not playing direct passing, and you are playing then a bit more of a counter-attacking game because you're allowed to. You've you've earned yourself that 3-0 lead, then you'd switch out of this sort of tactic anyway. So we recommend that playing with this until you get to sort of like a 3-0 lead, and then you can obviously change in something, you know, just so that you don't give up those easy chances anyway. And then the offensive width, we've gone for 60, of course. You know, you need to have some width in your formations. It's always important not to be too predictable, making sure you're too narrow. Of course, it's, you know, important to not go super wide because then you open up your midfielders and then it's very easy. That's what makes it easy for people to play through your lines, play through your, your players quite easily because you're probably playing too open on your width. So it's always important to make sure you have some width because you don't need to obviously everything going in the middle. It just becomes very easy to defend for your opponent. So make sure you have that balance between the two. And then the players in the box, corners and free kicks, these three things you can kind of set up to how they suit you. We tend to leave the players in the box on five because we want our instructions to really dictate who goes in the box and who doesn't. Corners, we like to have on around about three just so we have that option to go short or sometimes swing it in dependent on how overpowered corners on free kicks we'll use on one. So now before we continue, if you want us to make more videos like this one, then make sure that you hit that thumbs up button as this does go a long way to supporting us. And make sure you comment below right now with any questions and thoughts on any other videos that you would like us to cover going forward. So let's jump into the instructions for this formation and why they're so good. 
So starting up front with the two strikers, of course, we have two uh, very elite level strikers, but you need to stay central and get in behind. We find on your two strikers, especially when you're using direct passing, they're going to be making runs in behind anyway. So if you're going to have players running in behind. This tactic really suits, you know, pace up front. You know, if you don't have pace up front, then using direct passing doesn't really make a lot of sense because you don't have the players to make the runs in behind. You don't have the speed. So this really suits you know, strikers that have speed, most people, of course, like to play with speed up front anyway. So if you do have speed, then we recommend going with the stay central in this tactic. It's also really important, obviously, to keep them on stay central because the width is provided by the wide cams, Ronaldinho and Jao Felix in this case. Those wide cams do provide the width. So you need to make sure your two strikers are always sort of staying in between the width of the post just to obviously gobble up any chances that the rest of the team do create for them. And then when it comes to those two wide cams, it's important as well to have players that have pace, but they don't have to be like rapid. Of course, Ronaldinho and this Jao Felix, they do have pace, but they're not like super rapid. You know, you're not using Mbappes and Viniciuses and like elite level pace. They just have to have some pace because sometimes they obviously do make the runs in behind as well themselves. So they need to have the pace when the direct passing kicks in. But their main job is to create chances and just create havoc. Obviously, you know, they're sort of not really been picked up by the CDMs. They're not really been picked up by the fullbacks. So they're the ones that sort of are in those half spaces and really have to create a lot of the chances. They, they're the ones that drag the DMs across. They drag the fullbacks. They drag the center backs out of position. And then it's up to them to be able to either exploit that space or find a pass through to the strikers or find a pass into the midfield who then finds it to the strikers. So they're the ones that really create a lot of the chances. So you really need to have players in these positions that obviously have the good dribbling, that have, you know, confident on the ball, good weak foot, you know, good composure, of course, have good passing. That's really important because they make a lot of those runs in behind or play a lot of those passes for the runs in behind of you two strikers. When it comes to your two CDMs, we've obviously got Kante and Dimitri Payet in these two positions. Now, Payet is not a great, someone that we generally sub off quite early because we like to bring on a proper out-and-out -out defensive midfielder. We have Belling that we like to bring on. It's just chemistry reasons we can't put him in the team. So it's really important you have two proper defensive midfielders. You know, yes, these guys are on, are on direct passing, so they sometimes do get pulled out of that defensive position, especially if you've been in possession of the ball for a long time. It means that your players are constantly... The, the more you have the ball, the more your players running behind. So especially if you have the ball a lot, you know, you're going to notice these DMs get more out of position. So we tend to leave them on balanced anyway. There's no point having them really on stay back while attacking. But we use them on cut passing lanes because obviously when you do lose possession, you need to make sure you've got proper defensive midfielders that are confident and just able to intercept passes and stop those counterattacks so that obviously you can keep recycling the play forwards. But you do need to make sure you've got proper out and out DMs. Also having some guys that have got pace. You know, you don't want guys that are slow here. Of course, because, you know, the, the counterattacks can happen quickly and you don't have the bodies back. So you need to have guys that, like a Kante, that can cover the ground really quickly, inset the ball, get a lot of sort of those AI inceptions and AI blocks. That really does help you out a lot. And then rather predictably, of course, the whole back four is going to be on stay back while attacking. Now, one thing that you can do, if you so please, is you could put all of the back four on conservative inceptions. Make mainly just to make sure that they don't ever try to like jump in and win a tackle. Like sometimes the AI obviously likes to make those automatic interceptions for you. If they fail, of course you're out there out of position. But because it's doing it with the back four, you got you got no one behind. You know, so you really can't afford the back four to be to be making those decisions, especially because the rest of the team is kind of going to be going forwards because of the direct passing and because of the press. So you could actually have everybody on you know, conservative interceptions if you do struggle. If that's something that comes up a lot, that's a, a short-term little fix that you can have. It's something, you know, some other things that you can do, you can turn the direct passing off and just change to sort of long ball and balanced instead. If you are someone that's finding it a little bit too difficult in terms of, you know, that split between the attack and defense, you've been counter-attacked a little bit too much. And then of course, the keeper is going to be on comes for crosses and sweeper keeper. So that is it for the 4 triple two, And that is why we think this formation is just goaded. We think this is the king formation. This is the number one formation. And we just don't think there's another formation that can compete with this one right now. It's just so good at everything. It's so good attacking, 
so good at creating chances. It's good defensively if you need it to be. It's just a great formation to use all around. It doesn't really have too many weaknesses, and we just think that right now this is the top dog formation. So we recommend that at the very least this should be in your game plan, in your in your plan somewhere when you're looking to sort of you know change a game or whether you're playing champs. It's just it just should be in your game plan at all times. And that of course the more you play with this formation. The more you get used to it, the more you understand it, and then the better you'll become at using it and exploiting it. So as we said earlier in the video, if you do want us to continue to make more videos like this one, then we do need your support. So make sure that you smash that like button, make sure that you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notifications bell. And if you do want to ask us any further questions, whether it be FIFA related or not, make sure you join our Discord. The link to that is down in the description if you want to ask us anything over there. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.